And so paper three is around the corner. We know the pre-release, we know the topic. I want to show you and I'm going to do a few videos on how to plan the perfect nine mark question. The pre-release section is worth uh, half the marks of paper three, which in itself is worth 30% of your GCSE. So that is worth 15% of your GCSE. So getting that nine marker matters. So in the very likely event that the question says, do you think the proposed totally village development should go ahead? Um, there's two different ways in which you can structure that answer. You can do a paragraph saying yes and no which I call the simple one, or you can do something I'll explain later on called the ad balancer, which has a paragraph saying yes and no in each paragraph and balances along the way. A slightly more technical, slightly more likely to give you a great 789, okay? Um, or 789 out of nine in the nine, case of nine marker. If you did a simple option, you'd say, well, actually, point, UK experiences a severe housing shortage. You use evidence to back that up. You explain how totally would help uh, uh, solve this, uh, this issue. You'd also explain the economic and environmental benefits before explaining how the benefit the area and how they're sustainable. Paragraph two, you'd say environment costs are too high, give some data on the green uh, greenfield uh, thrashing in some ways, explain how it's unsustainable and give social and economic disadvantages and explaining how they are negative. Okay, so here's a model answer for you. In paragraph one, you could say as your point that I believe totally village development should go ahead as England is facing a severe housing short challenge. Okay, that's your point. Evidence from the booklet says that, according to the NHF, the overall demand for new homes in England is 340,000 per year. Yet, according to Figure 1, only 170 new homes were built in 2022, and the government has never reached its conservative target of 300,000. doesn't matter if it's a late right-wing or left-wing government, they have never reached it. Okay? That's your evidence. Your analysis says that, actually, Figure 2 suggests totally would bring further 2,800 new homes, proportion of them affordable housing, which is good because the area is expected to see an increase of 10 to 15% of housing growth. Uh, that's taken from figure one. This means that growing demand for housing in an area already experiencing a shortage will be reduced and in turn will help to overcome the crisis. Okay? You could also say, well, actually, it brings economic and environmental benefit. Talk about the mixed use development that will include offices, workshop, cafes, uh, and also the access to the uh, area of outstanding national beauty. Um, natural, uh, national beauty, yeah. So in ulti ultimately, it means that we're going to be phasing away from primary, secondary sector, the current farmland here, to tertiary sector. Therefore, that will boost the wages, boost the, boost the standard of living and quality of life, because you're also living next to an area of outstanding national beauty. It's paragraph one on yes. Paragraph two on no, you'd say, well, however, it could be argued that this plan shouldn't go ahead due to its environmental impact. The evidence could be that 4,000 hectares of greenfield sites are built on each year, despite the fact brownfield sites could be used to build 1.3 million new homes. The problem with that is that it means that, and that's a quote from figure three, an area of open countryside will end up looking like an urban area exacerbating air pollution, congestion, increasing the use of the risk of flood because they'd be building near floodplain and making the, the ground impermeable due to impermeable surfaces like tarmac and concrete. Furthermore, development will have a negative impact on existing communities. So um, it'll put lo pressure on local services and lo healthcare facilities because it w everything won't be built in one go. So by the time the railway was ready, people who've moved into the Tunnelly village will have to use Tunbridge uh, Railway at the same time. The increased pressure on already stretched services. And equally, um, new businesses will take away um, customs from current existing businesses. Okay, so that'd be the simple structure I recommend you could use. It's a good one. The other one is called the balance one. So you mix and match pros and cons together in each paragraph. Okay, so you, this is an example of a structure saying yes, it, it, it should be built because, however, it also has social and economic disadvantages. And paragraph two would say, no, the disadvantages are too high. However, it also brings some economic and social uh, environmental benefits. So same thing again. I'm going to flick through them. You can pause the video as you go. But basically, point, evidence, explanation, same as the first model I gave you. And then you say, however, you'd present your negative impacts and explain your negative impacts. And in paragraph two, you do the same. You continue with negative impact, give some evidence, explain the negative impact, and say, however, it would bring benefits, and explain those benefits. I hope that helps. I'll give you a few other examples of videos to help you prepare, but ultimately, it's a really nice question to be able to answer.